started. So hello everyone and welcome to the, what's now an annual Scripps Research Graduate Program Open House. My name is Dawn Eastman and I will facilitate the first part of the session. On the screen, you will see the schedule of today's events. As I mentioned, I'll start with a graduate program overview. And then we will um, have Paulo Garcia moderate a panel of admissions committee members who will share tips on putting together a very strong application. Then Shannon Deck will moderate a panel of first year graduate students who will tell you the critical things that they wish that they knew when they were in your shoes. And then um, Karen and Paul will facilitate a Q&A. But before we get started, I want to just go over a few housekeeping items. The first is that all participants have been muted and your videos have been disabled. When you think of a question, please use the Q&A button located at the bottom of your screen to submit it. As I mentioned, Karen and, and Paul will be moderating the questions and we'll try our very best to answer as much as we can throughout today's event. So let's get started with the first uh, portion of our discussion today. I will begin with an overview of Scripps Research, tell you what's important about us and what makes us special. And then I'll talk about our various graduate programs, our doctoral program, the Skaggs Oxford program, and the MD PhD programs that we offer with our uh, university partners. And then we'll talk a little bit about the admissions process, all the application requirements, the statistics from 2022 admission cycle, and then financial support. So let's start by talking about Scripps as a whole. Scripps Research is one of the largest biomedical research facilities in the country. We do basic research in biology, chemistry, neuroscience, and immunology. We also study over 40 different diseases, so everything from HIV, Alzheimer's, cancer, diabetes. We also do clinical research and translational research, some of which I've just mentioned. But we also do what's po called population sciences, where we engage with uh, patients to find out about their experiences with treatments, et cetera, and then incorporate that into our uh, research. We have two locations for Scripps Research, La Jolla, which is just a little north of San Diego in California, and Jupiter, Florida, which is um, a little north of the Palm Beach area, two beautiful parts of the country. For these two um, locations. We have about 3,000 employees, 200 faculty, about 400 postdocs who support the research at the Institute, as well as a little over 300 graduate students. One of the things that we thought we would really appreciate knowing is that Scripps Research is ranked as number one in the world as the most influential research institution. And that means that not only are we doing really important research, but it's also influencing the research of others that are doing are are doing research throughout the world. So let's start now by talking a little bit about the doctoral program. So this is a five-year program. It is a fully funded program, which we'll talk more about later. In the first year, you start off by doing two components of the program, the coursework and the lab rotations. So let's talk a little bit about the coursework. It is customized curriculum and you're required to take 18 credits. Of these 18 credits, you can choose to do four um, courses as what we call core courses, letter grades, and then you can do two as electives, and I'll talk more about that in a minute. In addition to doing coursework 50% of your time, you also do lab rotations for the other 50% of your time. Lab rotations are 10 to 12 week experiences in different labs for you to figure out exactly where you want to do your thesis work. Most students do three rotations throughout the course of their first year, but really is up to you how many rotations that you do. You're only required to do one. If you start in that first rotation and you really enjoy being in that lab, there's really no reason for you to do an additional rotation. There's some paperwork, there's some requirements that, that you have to complete, but you can stay in that first rotation if you really enjoy being there. But most students do three rotations as well as doing their coursework throughout their first year. 
Then in their second year, they move on to do uh, complete their coursework and then start working in their thesis lab to figure out exactly what their thesis project will be. So let's talk a little bit more about the customizable curriculum. We have an umbrella graduate program where you can come in and study 12 different areas, research areas. This includes biology, chemistry, neuroscience, structural biology, computational biology, et cetera. And all of our courses are placed into those various tracks within those research areas. Here are the 40 or so courses that we offer in our curriculum. And you can choose to take any of these courses that you see fit based on your research interest. So what does that look like? Here I have an example of what we call our customized immunology curriculum. You can take cell biology, molecular biology, immunology, papers in immunology and microscience as a core, and then you can take molecular medicine and virology as electives. Now, why you would choose courses as your core versus elective really will be based mainly on what you're comfortable taking. Students who are in immunology may really feel comfortable taking immunology classes and thus want to take those as their core classes and take them as a letter grade, which you have to get a B or better in order for it to count and then take courses outside of immunology as electives. These can be anywhere from molecular medicine, we have some other examples down here, structural biology, biostatistics. And since this is not their area of expertise, they may want to take it for pass-fail. And in pass-fail, you, you can get up to a C in that course and be considered a uh, pass. So this uh, arrangement allows you to take courses outside of your research area and still be able to learn a lot more and be able to contribute to your research. So we talked a little bit about the first year and the second year. After you finish your coursework, you then move on to doing your, your thesis work. In your second year, you'll be required to take, uh, required to form an advisory committee. And this is three to four faculty with research that's relevant to your thesis project. And they will be mentoring you and supporting you throughout the rest of your time in the program. And this starts with your candidacy examination, which you will take at the end of your second year, usually in the summer. And this candidacy examination is based on your thesis project. It's a two-part exam. The first is a written part where you will write up a research proposal in the NIH style. And then to your committee, you will defend your proposal. You will present your proposal, what exactly you are intending on doing, why you've chosen the methods that you have chosen. And your committee will ask you a series of questions to ensure that you really understand how the techniques work, understand how you should be approaching your research. So they start with the candidacy exam, which is in the second year, and then you will meet with this committee every year and they'll be providing you guidance on your thesis. So you will write up a short um, document, two to four pages, and then talk to your committee, present to your committee exactly what you've been able to accomplish uh, in that in that year. So this committee is really important because they're going to be providing you guidance, so monitoring your, your progress, and really helping you through the program. Um, in addition to your uh, annual meetings with your advisory committee, you will also be required to do an original research proposal at the end of your, your fourth year. So similar to your candidacy examination that we just talked about where it is a written component as well as a presentation, same thing is true for the original research proposal. The difference is that the original research proposal is about a topic outside of your thesis work. So in the fourth year, when we believe that you've learned the, uh, the program learning outcomes, you will then be expected to apply them to a completely different research topic. So with your advisor and your committee chair, you will go through um, a set of topics and then select one that has to be approved by your uh, chair and your advisor, and then you will write up a proposal about your research topic. 
And then in year five, hopefully uh, year five, but it certainly could be um, in your sixth year, most students graduate in five and a half years, you will write up your dissertation, which will be a culmination of all the research that you've done, as well as you have a series of publications. So now let's talk about the Skaggs Oxford program. So the Skaggs Oxford program, this is a really unique opportunity. We are one of just a handful of institutions that have a, a program with University of Oxford in, um, in the UK. This is a sixth year program, a six year program where you will spend three years at Oxford and three years at Scripps. And of course you could do this on either the California or the Florida campus. And this is a really great opportunity for you to experience different training environments. You will focus on either the biology or chemistry at California at Scripps, either California or Florida campus, and then focus more on the biochemistry side of your projects at Oxford. And this project is an integrated project from the very beginning. Once you're accepted into this program, you will identify potential mentors or at least topics that you want to work on. And then we will work with the advisors that are working in that, in that area to help you identify a project that can be integrated throughout your time in the program. So just a little bit more about the Skaggs Oxford program. You can start either at Oxford or at Scripps Research. And regardless of where you start, you follow the program requirements of the institution in which you are, you are at. So for example, if you start at Skaggs Oxford, you will follow the program of the Skaggs Oxford, uh, of the um, University of Oxford program. They do not have any classes. You will do rotations. Then you will do what they call tutorials. And then you'll begin working on your project. They do have a candidacy exam, which you will take in the, at the end of your second year. In addition, they have a number of professional development workshops and activities that you will be required to participate in. Once you finish your time at Oxford, you will then move to Scripps Research and continue the project and follow the program requirements at Scripps Research. So as I mentioned earlier, the ORP or the original research proposal is usually done in year four. So then you will complete those requirements and then you will defend at Scripps Research. And here I have outlined on the right-hand side of my slides, what would happen if you start at Scripps Research? So at Scripps Research in year one, as I mentioned, students take classes, they do rotations. You will follow that those same requirements. You'll begin your project and you'll do your candidacy exam. In year four or so, when you move over to Oxford, you'll continue your project. You will do your professional development work uh, requirements and then you will defend. You will not be expected to complete the requirements for both programs um, as part of this dual degree program. So at the end of the six years, you will receive two degrees, a DPhil from Oxford and a PhD from Scripps Research. So as you can imagine, it's a very intense program, but certainly worth, um, worth it. So now let's talk about the MD PhD programs that we offer. So this is an eight year program and it's in the format of 242. And what that means is that you will start medical school and do the two years of classes of, at medical school, take your first boards in medical school, and then come over to Scripps Research to do the PhD portion of the program, do the requirements that, are, that I just described earlier, but instead of five years, it'll be condensed. And we could talk about how that's done into four years. And then you go back into medical school to do the clinics and, and complete the second part of the boards for medical school. So the way this is done is by partnering with two institutions, uh, one in California in San Diego, the University of California at San Diego. And in Florida, we partner with Florida Atlantic University to have this uh, joint program. Now, 
as I mentioned, in order for the four years for you to be able to complete all the requirements in four years, we have reduced the coursework requirements that you have to complete. You still have the customized, uh, com customizable curriculum in which to choose from, but you're only required to do nine course credits instead of the um, 18. In addition, you will do your laboratory rotations during your medical school summers. So at the end of your first year in medical school, you will do a rotation. And at the end of your second year in medical school, you'll do rotations. So you should come into graduate school already knowing which lab you want to do your thesis work in. So now let's talk a little bit about student outcomes. So as I mentioned, we have about 300, 320 students on our two campuses. There are about 800 alums, who, uh, 800 students who have graduated from our program, and they're really doing outstanding uh, things in the uh, scientific community. And about 60, it takes our students, 85% of our students graduate in six years. Some need to stay on longer and their funding will continue as long as they remain in good academic standing. Majority of our students graduate with three to five publications. It's really critical that you have that cachet to go on to do either postdoc work or going into industry. And of those um, 85 that graduate, 57 of them go on to postdoc work. So I have a little bit more information here about outcomes. Of uh, graduating students, 35% of them go directly into industry. Uh, sorry, 35% of them are currently in industry, 22% of them are in faculty positions all over um, the world, which is really an outstanding number. This is higher than a lot of institutions around, around the world. Many, many, many of our alums go on to academic positions. Currently, we have about 16% of our alums are still in, in doctoral positions because as you can imagine, it's a five year or so position. So those who recently graduated are still in this um, role. Then we have other um, uh, career options for our alums. Some go into consulting, some are, go on to own their own business. Some are doing other really exciting things in, um, in academia, but in non-faculty roles, for example. They are running core facilities at, at universities or in ad administrative roles in, in academia. So now let's talk a little bit about the admissions process. So what is an, uh, an application? What is a complete application? They're all due on December 1st. For, you have to submit transcripts from every institution in which you have um, done your undergraduate work where your courses are gonna to count towards your undergraduate degree. We require three letters of recommendation, preferably from faculty in which you've done research, but certainly a course um, directors are also accepted. We require two statements. One is a statement of purpose and one is a research statement. I highlight this here because these this is the most important part of your application. You really want to hear about in your statement of purpose, what it is you're going to do when you come to Scripps. And we're also very, very interested in hearing how you describe the research that you've done prior to coming to Scripps. Um, the GRE is no longer required, and that's why it is crossed out here. But certainly, if you're interested in doing the, the GRE, we will, ex we will review your um, scores. And if you, you think that any part of your application is weak, then we certainly encourage you to submit the GRE scores because it can only help you. And lastly, if you're applying to the Skaggs Oxford program, there is an additional essay that's required. And this is really all about why you're interested in this experience and potential um, mentors at the University of Oxford institution. So here I provided you with the admission statistics. Last year, we had 1,049 applications. In California, 139 were interviewed. 57 were interviewed in Florida. 127 of these 139 were admitted to the California campus and 38 were admitted in Florida. And of this 127, 50 accepted our offer and 14 of the 38 accepted our offer in 
uh, Florida. So what does this group look like? 48% of our applications were from women and 47% of the entering class is women. We really try to uh, look for 50% of our incoming class to be women. That is our goal. 12% of the applications were from um, underrepresented minorities and 14% URMs in our entering class and 35% of our entering class are international students. We tend to take a lot of international students because our funding comes from a number of different sources, not just the federal government. So for the 2023 uh, admissions, we're looking for similar numbers. We're looking for 50% of our applications to be women. We would love to bring in upwards of 20% URMs, and we're looking for uh, about 30 to 35% international students. So before I wrap up, because I think I went a couple minutes over, I just wanted to let you know about the financial support. So for our doctoral program that I talked about, it is a fully funded program. What does that mean? It means we'll provide you with your tuition, benefits, and a stipend. The current stipend levels is $40,000 per year in California and $38,000 in Florida. If you're able to secure an external fellowship, from you know, NIH or NSF or Hertz, we will provide you an additional supplement. For the Skaggs Oxford program, it is also fully funded, but the rates are slightly different when you are in Oxford, and here is the current rate for year one. And for our MD-PhD program, we will provide you with financial support when you are in the graduate program. Medical school costs are determined by US, UCSD and FAU. So you will work with them on exactly what the costs are for medical school. So now um, I just want to leave you with our contact information. If you have any questions, you certainly are welcome to reach out to us at admissions at scripts.edu. And here is our website where we contain all the information about the programs that I discussed and many, many others. So I know that we are a little over, so I just wanted to check in with Karen, who's on the call, and see if there's any question that I should answer now, or if we should go on to Paulo. We have a couple of questions. Um, would Scripps have less available funding for international students? Would it affect the chance of international students getting it? No, all of our students receive the same funding. It does not matter if they're international or not. Okay, have several others. Um, how common is it common for students to fall, to fail their candidacy exam? If a student were to drop out, would they have the option to receive a master's degree? Pretty complicated question. I'm thinking maybe we'll save that one, Karen, because uh, I want to make sure we leave enough time for everyone else, and then we can um, we can get into the specifics of failing candidacy and what happens if students need to drop out. There is a whole entire process for master's degrees, which is possible, but of course it depends on where you are in the program. Okay, would the admissions be more competitive for international students? Admissions is the same across all types of students. Okay. Uh, so we may take a gap year. What will the application deadline be in 2024? It would be the same, I assume? That's Next. correct. It's, yes. it's December 1st of every year. Okay. How many applicants will be admitted into the Skaggs Oxford program? It's usually two to three per campus, max. Okay. Should students indicate the PI they want to work with at the time of the application? They certainly can do that as part of the application. I think uh, our admissions committee, we should probably leave that for them. I think there's places within the application for students to indicate who they would potentially want to work for. Uh, where can they find prerequisites for the program, such as college classes? There are no prerequisites for uh, our graduate program, so you will not find that on our website because we take students, regardless of you, if you've studied biology, chemistry, mathematics, 
doesn't matter what you've studied is really what you're going to do with it once you get here. So there are no prerequisites. Okay. Uh, just a good question. Does funding come from the program itself or from the principal investigator? And they said investigator, but I think they meant investor. Uh, yeah, I think it's investigator. Um, all these are really good questions. I'm thinking that we should just hold off on all the rest of these questions and I can answer them. But the program comes from a combination of the program and the principal investigator. Okay, there you go. Great, thanks, Karen. Uh -huh. Paolo, I'll turn it over to you.